Hi, Michael here. I wanted to show you how to convert a two-dimensional dungeon map, one of these old-school, uh, old-fashioned blue maps, into a 3D isometric map using Photoshop. I tried to show this before, and I ran into an audio problem, and I recorded about 18 minutes of brilliance without, uh, without ever having any audio for it, so it was lost. So this is take two. So uh, what am I looking at here? I've got a Photoshop file and it's set up to do one of my 2D dungeons the way that I normally do. And if uh, I've shown you in another series as a quick way of doing dungeons where you're essentially painting just in white. Let me get white. And, you know, you can you can quickly sketch out rooms like this. You can use the mask. Um, I'm being really, really sloppy just to show you quickly, but um, it's a really handy way to, to make dungeons really quickly. 2D dungeons. And here's an example of a dungeon that I did a little earlier just to provide an example. You can see that I've got all the level numbers marked out um, to make sure that my staircases actually match up so that I don't have a level one staircase going down to another level one. Uh, that's surprisingly easy to do. And I've saved this as a file uh, called 2D dungeon. So what I do is I set a, I create a separate file. This is just another blank Photoshop file, same canvas size, 2000 by 2000. And I just go into file and place linked and I pick my 2D dungeon map. And when I do this, Photoshop imports it as a smart object, which means it's not gonna lose any resolution no matter what I do to it. And that's important, uh, that'll come in later. But first let me set up this second document like an isometric dungeon map. So the first thing is to get my isometric grid, and I have a handy isometric grid saved before. I'll show you in another video how to make that kind of pattern, but you might grab one off the web. And let me set that layer to multiply. Now, one of the nice things about um, using a pattern is that if I decide to resize my canvas, I wind up with more pattern. I don't have to you know, readjust any image that I might have downloaded. So patterns are great, separate subject. Okay. Now, let me just turn that off for a second. I need to talk to you a little bit about, actually, I should have used a fill layer for that. Let's delete that, get a solid color behind us. There we go. Okay, so when you convert a 2D dungeon to uh, isometric, you have to think about what angle are you gonna do that from? So I could uh, you're going to be looking corner to corner, and let me just show you the various options we have. We could be looking this way, we could be looking this way, any corner essentially. And the thing you're looking for is basically Qbert, uh, what I call Qbert topology. If you remember that old arcade classic uh, Qbert, where you were a little character uh, bouncing around on this kind of uh, uh, two-directional uh, staircase made of cubes, um, this is the kind of topology you're looking for, which is basically uh, there is a nice sense of height and altitude, but you don't have things going behind other things and sneaking others. Basically, it's kind of like your two-dimensional map was draped over a set of stairs. Now, this is ideal. Uh, the, the best case is a map that looks like this, the kind of pathological worst case is if you have a mansion and this is the third level of the mansion and then this is the second level of the mansion and then this is the first you basically need to spread these apart and then you don't have one isometric map you have kind of an expando view with three separate isometric maps so uh cubert topology so let's let's look at this i've got my uh i've got my highest level here this is level one and then i've got level two in like this. Now I set this map up deliberately to make it easy for me to do this, which you can control if you are actually creating the two-dimensional map yourself. If you're doing Caves of Chaos as an isometric uh, version, which sounds like a good idea, you don't have that flexibility. So uh, if, when you're making your maps, definitely think about Qbert topology. So I don't know if you can see this, but since level four is down here, level three and level two are here, basically the, the right angle to look at it from is this. That, that way I've got my lowest level in the front and I've got my highest level in the back. Okay, let's get rid of all of that. So now I know what direction I want to uh, view it from. Let's take my 2D dungeon and I'll just use a Command T or Control T and I'm gonna rotate it 45 degrees. And again, you can see now that level four is at the bottom, 
level, the highest level is at the top. I numbered these backwards. I numbered level one as the as the highest. I don't know why I did that, but there you go. And I'm committing that that um, uh, the transformation. So now what I want to do is I want to squash this vertically exactly 58%. I don't know why it's 58%. I tried to work out the math, and I'm going to have to have a second crack at it, but it is 58%. Now, you can use Photoshop's transform tool again to convert it. And the problem I get is that um, it wants to preserve this corner to corner. If I had make this a raster view, I wouldn't have that problem. But because this is a smart object, Photoshop wants to kind of preserve this. So the way around this problem, in my case, is to put this in a group. So I've just made an empty group there. And you can see this is going to be my 2D dungeon group. And now, uh, if I resize this smart object, it behaves like this. But if I resize this 2D dungeon group, it actually behaves like this. You can see I'm just kind of squashing it down. And exactly how much I'm going to go up and manually enter 58% to make it just perfect. There we go. So this matches the geometry of the isometric grid. It isn't actually the right size yet, so I still have to do that. So I'm going to, again, stay with the selection of my group, uh, Command or Control T. And I don't know if you can see this here, but right in the center of a transformation, there's this kind of this little crosshairs, which marks the center. I'm going to move this down to one corner to make this easy for me. And I'm going to take this, and I'm going to position that corner, align it with the grid. What I'm doing now is rescaling this to match. And because I have put the so-called center of scaling down there on one corner that matches my isometric grid. When I uh, grab this corner, hold down Shift and Alt, uh, it re-expands around that. You can see it's expanding around the point that I moved to the bottom there. Okay, so again, let's just let's just recap that. Uh, I've made it 58% the correct height. And then I've taken my second transformation, grab the center point, slam it down at the bottom, shift, alt, and make this exact same size as my grid. There we go. Uh, did I get that right? I don't know. Now, I can try this a number of different times because, as I said earlier, this is a smart object. So I don't lose any resolution if I, if I have another crack at this. But I want to make sure that... Got that aligned at the bottom. Let me just nudge this around a bit. It's kind of boggling my eye for some reason. Okay, close enough. There we go. So now I have my two-dimensional dungeon rescaled, transformed, and rotated so that I can draw it correctly. Now, the next trick, what I want to do is I want to spread this apart into a number of different layers so that I can so that I can have copies of it, one for each of the correct altitude. You can see I just made a copy of it. So that will allow me to put this exactly where I want level one to be. So the first thing. Let me just rename this layer to 2D Original, and I'll make this level 1. So I'm going to hide this original layer. So let me just move this into position with the grid again. What I'm going to do is go and select every part of this. I'm going to put an alpha mask by clicking this little button here. This allows me to control the transparency of this layer. You can see that if I get a nice big fat uh, brush here. I'm painting in black on the transparency, the alpha layer, and I can hide parts of it. So I'm just going to hide everything that's not level one. I'm going to hide the staircases as well. So level one looks like that. Level one here comes down to here. And I don't have to be too neat about this. There. That's everything that's level one. So I've taken my original. Now I'm not erasing. I'm using it. That's the nice thing about using an alpha mask. If I've made a mistake, I can just turn on white and paint it in again. Uh, that allows me a lot of a lot of control if I make mistakes. Now let's make a copy of the original again. I'll use that dragging down here. I'll rename this to level. 
if I could spell level two, let's hide level one. I'll put an alpha mask on level two, and I'm just going to erase everything that's not level two. And I need black for that. And I'm going to allow the staircases to be part of the level below. So it's going to look like that. There's the boundary between level two and three. Did I get that right? I did. Okay, so now just grab a big whoops, grab a big brush, erase all that, and I'm going to erase level one. But I'm going to leave the staircases because, as I said, let's let the staircases be part of level, the level below. Let me erase this. There. And again, get my big fat room sweeper brush. So that is just level two. Okay, and I'm going to do it again. Let's hide that, make a copy of my original. Level three. Put an alpha mask on it, and let's erase everything between level three and two. And we'll let the stairs be part of level three. At this point, I'm just having some faith that this is all going to work out right. Erase levels one and two. And let's erase the stairs down to level four. There's level three. Now, let's do it again. Last time, level four. <clears throat> Make a copy of my original, put an alpha mask on it. Level four should be pretty simple. I'm letting the stairs be part of the level below, so level four keeps that staircase. That's the boundary. Level four is pretty small. Okay, so oh, I didn't name that name that level four. So now I can put these back on, and you see I've got uh, I get <laughs> my eraser lines don't quite line up, so it looks like there's some exciting stuff in there. But what I can do now is take my level one, and I can if I hold down Shift, I select the Move command, which for me is V. I can just move this up 20 feet. One, two. So I've moved level one up 20 feet. Now I'm going to move levels three and four down 20 feet. One, two. And let's move level four down another 20 feet. One, two. So now if you can, if you can just make that out, I've taken my map and I've spread the four pieces vertically the height they should go, except for level one doesn't look quite lined up with the grid anymore. Okay, so what's the point of all that? The point of all that is to allow me to make an inking layer where I actually begin to draw my isometric dungeon. So I'm going to collapse all this. So I've got all these in a separate group, my 2D dungeon. And let's turn the opacity down a little bit so that I can see and work on this layer. So I'm going to work in black, get my medium pen, Okay, that's how I want. So this, again, is just another rough layer. This is just to allow me to uh, to figure out the geometry of my isometric dungeon. So just to make sure that it's obvious that I'm doing that, let's add a solid color layer on top of that, some kind of draft blue. And I'll set this as what they call a clipping mask. 
so the point of that is just that if I now draw on this layer, everything's going to come out in this kind of sketchy blue. So I'll label, I'll name this dungeon sketch. Okay, so the only really tricky part is just putting the stairs back in. So let me zoom in on on this staircase here. You can see this this hallway. This is part of uh, level two here. I'm gonna make my grid a little less brutal because it's kind of hard to see. Let's lighten up this as well. Okay, so you can see the end of hallway one comes down. It goes down two squares and then over here so my staircase looks like this same with this it goes down two over two it's a 20 foot staircase I chose to make all these dungeon levels 20 feet apart I didn't need to do that I can make them however I like but down two over two so I think at this point it should be apparent how this works Two, one, two. I don't know what I do with the staircase here. That's kind of funky. <laughs> okay, I didn't align it with the grid just to trick myself. Okay, so one, two, one, two. Fine. Don't do that to yourself. And it's easy to miss a staircase, apparently. But there we go. I've now put in all of the staircases, and I think you can imagine how I'm well on the way to understanding the geometry of my isometric dungeon. So there we have it. We went from there to there and wherever that took me. I don't know how many minutes that was. I uh, hope that was useful. Uh, as always, leave something in the comments. If you're interested, I'm going to post links to an article about cubic topology and happy isometric dungeon drawing.